Right, hello guys. So we're going to talk about genre today. And um, the word genre, it's actually, it's Greek and it means to sort. And that is really what a genre is. It's a way to identify different groups of things. For example, um, if you're interested in horror, but you see a poster that looks like it might be a horror, and then you go there and it's a comedy or a really serious film, you're going to be disappointed. So as an audience, we need genres so that we know what we're going to go and uh, partake in, be it a music video, a video game, or a film, TV show. Now, as a media producer, a genre is a way for us to target that audience. So when we make that poster or that advert, it's really important that we make that trailer look and feel like the genre that it is so that we attract the right people. So we're gonna look at genres this week and the next coming weeks but this week we're going to be looking at video game genres and video game genres are a little bit different because other genres they're built up of these commonalities that's what makes a genre things that are common across a range of different products for example um, in horror it's very common to have uh, dark lighting or to have abandoned places and because they occur so often, commonalities, then they become sort of rules, conventions of a genre. And that really is it. So a genre are these sort of set of unofficial rules that help us identify what it is. Now in video games, it's the only platform that doesn't use visual style. So in film, TV, you'll get a visual style of the genre, you'll get storylines, narratives, certain characters, things that are going to crop up that tell you what the genre is. Whereas in video games, we identify them purely based on how the audience interacts with it, how the audience plays that game. So for example, um, you can have horror, you can have sci-fi in a game, but that's not the genre. The genre will be whether or not it is a first-person shooter or a role-playing game. So. Without further ado, let's jump straight into that and let's look at some genres. So we're going to start off with first person shooter. Now the first person shooter is a really simplistic kind of game style. Um, essentially it normally uses a point of view um, camera shot and the objective is normally just to survive, stay alive by killing the enemies that you come into contact with. It was probably, there were earlier versions but I think the game that really shot this up to the forefront was Doom. So Doom was a very old game, uh, you'd go around shooting things, and that genre has evolved over time. It's become more realistic, so period drama, kind of um, World War One, Two, modern warfare. And then, because of the kind of genre it is, first-person shooters have led themselves to online play styles, so Call of Duty, being a really good example there of um, that online deathmatch style multiplayer and of course it's not just limited to guns and shooting there are other versions uh, most recently Left 4 Dead 2 being a really good example of that first person survival instinct but kind of challenging the genre by not necessarily just including guns Jesus Christ what are these guys? Right, let's have a look at RPGs. So RPGs are role-playing games and this is essentially where you take on a character and you can upskill that character so you can choose particular traits or skills and as you play through the game you can then choose to develop those skills in different ways. Now one of the fundamental things about an RPG 
is that you've got a lot more control and ownership over the kind of game that you play. So you can kind of choose what order you complete quests or missions, you can choose what quests or missions you want to complete, you can choose what kind of character you are. Um, so Skyrim and Fallout are brilliant examples of this. Of course, very early examples of RPGs are Pokemon from the Game Boy, um, where you can choose what Pokemon you want to catch and, f and fight, and you can choose what kind of trainer you're going to be, right the way through to games like um, Final Fantasy is a really brilliant example of a, a role-playing game that's gone on through time. Grand Theft Auto is an RPG, although a quite a limited one. You can't choose your character or skill up your characters. However, the fact that it is open world and that you can choose to ignore the quest line and do your own thing does put it into that category of role playing game. And then finally, we've got games um, such as World of Warcraft, which would be considered an MMO RPG. So it's a, a massive multiplayer online RPG. So these are very similar to your typical RPGs, the difference being that they're on an online platform and a whole group of people play them together. The next genre that we're going to look at then is adventure. So the adventure genre is a bit like an RPG, but the big difference is that you don't have autonomy over your character and you don't have this open world. It might feel like an open world, but essentially you're very much led and steered through a quest line that you have to complete. Notable differences to an RPG are that it's normally faster paced. The combat style and things like that are a little bit more fluid because there's less in terms of interacting with characters and choosing different paths so a lot more of the focus is on the speed of the gameplay. Tomb Raiders were an original example of um, the adventure genre. Prince of Persia is a good uh, follow on from that, this sort of idea although it feels like you're um, able to go anywhere you want in the world you're, you are set on a guideline, a set guideline Additionally to that, um, Assassin's Creed was originally supposed to be a Prince of Persia game, but they decided um, it had evolved so much in development that they created their own game, uh, which has gone on to be very successful. Um, and although that is open world, you are within a level where you have to meet set objectives and then you move to another level, making it adventure. Uh, for me personally, the superhero genre within video games really suits this uh, adventure platform really well. Spider-Man and Batman Arkham Knight are two very good examples of the adventure genre within video games.
knows what's going on at that shipyard, it's him. So the next genre to talk about is the sports or simulator genre. So these are normally quite low input games, they're very much built on trying to recreate um, a, a realism sense of being there or carrying out a sport and quite often they focus on the technical aspects of the sport. So uh, FIFA's been a long running football simulator um, and the main focus with FIFA is, is the graphics and how real it can be, how they create a sense of being at a football game with the live audience, uh, referee, coach interactions um, and I believe you can also manage your teams as well to give you that simulation. Driving games have been a, a popular um, platform within video games for a long time. So. Um, and again, there's a real focus on realistic photo quality graphics and really um, like trying to simulate as realistic an experience as possible when you're driving, adding in factors like gear changing and, and skidding and, and things for you to account. Golfing simulators as well, another very popular simulator. And of course we can't talk about simulators then without talking about games like The Sims where you just simulate being a human being and um, farming simulator so there are a whole range of simulating games such as um, train simulator, plane simulator and um, farming simulator, a game in real time where you drive around and, and, and just gather crops if you know everyone's got something they like. Okay. Finally then, we're going to look at the puzzle platform genre. So platform games have been a really popular part of console gaming. You can look at Super Mario and Sonic as these iconic original games. And what makes it a platform is it's normally 2D and your character kind of moves along and navigates around it a 2D layout. We've also got these puzzle genres that have come in as part of platforms and things like um, Tetris are, are an early example of that. Now they've evolved again um, and we've actually seen a resurgence of platform games because of mobile phones and so these are normally the platforms but you don't move the character around essentially you you press the phone or you swipe the phone in order to create a movement at the right time. So um, Lara Croft Go is a good example of a puzzle genre on your mobile phone 
Candy Crush and other puzzle genre. And then in terms of platforms, new games like Johnny Trigger, where you really just press the button as it's moving around in order to kill the bad guys. And a lot of these genres have been made quite popular by um, games like the Impossible Game. The so Impossible Game is essentially just a square that goes along, you have to overcome obstacles. But you don't move the square, you simply just press the button when you want it to jump, and you don't press the button when you don't want it to jump. Very simple, very simple idea, but really quite difficult in practice because it's all about timing and precision, hence the title of the Impossible Game. Really good soundtrack. Now the impossible game has then led on to slightly more evolved versions of that, so Geometry Dash being um, the sort of the big brother of the impossible game. Um, and yeah, I've got to be honest, when I watch this, I don't even know what's going on. I've no idea what's happening, I can't see where the character is. It's just madness. It's what I think drinking 10 bottles of Coke back to back would do to my brain. So I'm just going to let you watch this. And uh, that's it, video game genres. So there are a whole host of genres that I haven't even covered in this. Um, but they're the big ones, they're the main ones. So just to recap, first person shooter, role playing game, adventure, sports simulators and puzzle platforms. So um, that's it, video game genres. <laughs> 